GPT-3 powered review replier. So we're going to take the case of restaurant reviews and we're going to look at, you know, the review that customer put for a particular restaurant. And according to the review, we're going to generate a reply to that particular customer. So for example, uh, let's look at some of the restaurants. So I search here a biryani restaurant and let's go to one of the restaurant here on Google. And let's look at the reviews of that restaurant. And we can filter, let's pick up the good review, which you know, the highest means the highest rating. And let's copy this particular review. And we can put here that review and with respect to that customer review, we want to generate a reply to that customer. So we're going to click a generate reply. And you could see that um, it identified that this seems to be a positive review and it generated a response accordingly. And it looks quite natural or the human reply, right? That uh, thank you for the positive review and we are glad you enjoy our meal. And, you know, and this is interesting and found our staff to be friendly because the customer has put inside that review that staffs were friendly. So you identified what positive or compliment, you know, think customer say and you generate the a real human kind of reply, right? And this is what we're going to build. So we're going to use a GPT-3 to generate such a real replies. So to let's go, you know, before we look at this Streamlit application, we will go to the GPT-3 playground. So if you have watched the earlier GPT-3 videos, so you might be familiar that this is the GPT-3 playground where you can play around your problem statement, what you want to do. And once you are sure that GPT-3 is able to generate the text the way you want, in our case, we want to generate the review reply, then you can take that particular thing in the code format and integrate with your application. So let's first experiment with the, the GPT-3 playground here. So what do we want? We want to tell GPT-3 that we want to, you know, generate reply for the reviews. So if you could remember for a GPT-3, you can give an instruction. You could see here, there is some, uh, you know, placeholder instruction here, write a tagline for an ice cream shop. So this is an instruction that you give to the GPT-3 so that GPT-3 understands what you want to achieve. You can give instruction also, and you can also add a couple of examples so that it understands. We will see what I mean by that. So let's first give an instruction what we want to achieve. So I just put that instruction here that let's say the, we can might say that, okay, let's take this one, write a reply to the given review. This is the only instruction we want to give GPT-3 that right reply to the given review and then we can you know specify the review here so let's say that we want to put a review here let's copy this review from here we can paste that review here and then finally we will create that reply okay so we give a hint that now we are expecting a reply and you put a cursor here and you can submit here a request and what will happen gpt3 will see this instruction it will see what is the input and it will try to generate the expected output. So it is going to generate the text that we want, right? So let's submit the request. And you could see it has generated some response. It says that, thank you for your kind words. We are so happy you enjoy your meal and our hospitality. So this is something because, uh, you know, you mentioned the staffs are friendly and we hope to see you again so this is how good this is able to generate the description without giving any example we simply give an instruction and we give our input and ask to generate that particular reply we can try for the other example also so this was good example let's try the one which has a bad review all right maybe oh this is too big i want some shorter one okay this seems to be shorter one let's copy this one and you know someone has given the one rating so definitely they are not happy with this review and we want to generate now automatically reply with respect to that review so again i am putting cursor here right from where the reply should start and then i click on submit okay you could see according to the review it says that you know whatever the worst uh, biryani they had and all these things 
So you could see the automatic reply saying that we are sorry to hear that, that you didn't enjoy our biryani. And, you know, we strive to make our every dish with all their best abilities and all this thing, right? So you could see quite human uh, level reply that you could generate with the GPT-3. Now we could see the GPT-3 is able to do this thing. So we can simply copy this, whatever this prompt you call it in the code format and integrate with our application. In our case, we're going to integrate with our Streamlit application. But before that, I also wanted to show you that we only give an instruction and it is now generating the response. But sometimes what happens, you want to give more input to GPT-3, not just instruction. You also want to give, hey, if this is the review, this is how we will write our reply. Why this is important? Because those example will tell GPT-3 what kind of user business strategy or business culture or style you have so that it can adopt that style and reply in the same manner, right? So how do we give those examples? So let's copy this particular thing where I have put this thing. Right. Now, let me pay. So see what we have now. So we have a instruction here. We could give, you know, uh, the more clear and crystal instruction. You can play around what should be the instruction here. We are say that write a reply and also address if any concern the customer has in their feedback. So it become, you know, much more clear for GPT than what we want. And then we give an example, hey, if this is the review, then we want to give reply like this. And then we also give another example, if this is the review, we could give reply like this. Now these two examples are going to help GPT-3 to understand what is your, uh, you know, what is your business style of giving the reply so that it can copy that particular style. And you could also see we have separated those examples by these two hash. So you need to use some separator to separate the examples that you're going to use. It need not be two hash. You could add even three, four hashes, right? The criteria is that this particular separator should not be occurring here inside the example, right? Then it will uh, conflict. So this is the separator we have here. And these two examples once we give, then we can give our test example that we just given, right? And now what happened? You have an instruction. You have two sample examples from which GPT-3 can understand. And then again, you put an example separator. Then you put your test review. And now you want to ask for generate the reply. And then you can click on submit. Right. And then it is going to learn from your style of reply. And finally, going to generate the reply. So you can try this thing also. First, try giving just instruction. And if just instruction is not able to produce a good results, try to put few examples so that it will understand what exactly you want to achieve, right? But for in our case, I think uh, without also this, it is doing good. This is the simple thing and it is able to do good thing. And we can copy this code and put it in our Streamlit application. So let's go to our Streamlit application and see what we have first of all. So if you look at our Streamlit application, it has some heading or header here, which is like a title of what we do here. And then you could see there is some input field where user can paste a something here. And finally, we have a button and we are outputting this thing here. So if you haven't familiar with, you know, Streamlit, then I would say, you know, you can uh, visit the Streamlit website. They have good documentation. Even I have used Streamlit in multiple uh, videos and I'm going to explain whatever things we are using currently. So let me go back to the code. So first thing, we're going to need a Streamlit library. And the other thing is OpenAI because we're going to make a request to the OpenAI. Once you have these two things, you can install them, right? You can simply use pip install or you can put it in a requirements file or use a pip install to install those two things. Pretty simple. Then you see our header. We put a this one, right? GP3 restaurant review replier. That is nothing but Streamlit header. ST is nothing but the streamlit that we imported and ST.header is this thing. You see the text area where we copy pasted our review. This is nothing but the ST text area and we are assigning whatever the value entered here to this variable called review. And there is a generate reply button. These two things I'm talking about. This input area and this is the button. And this thing we're going to assign to variable called review. 
Now we want to generate the reply for it. So we check a condition. If button is pressed and if there is anything inside the review, this is the condition, you know, we want to call a function called generate reply and that is going to take a value or pass a parameter review, which is nothing but the whatever the review we're going to enter there. And then it is going to pass here generate reply. And this is nothing but our API request that what we have. But there is some difference that I'm going to show you. So let's copy, you know, what we got from the here, let's copy this thing and let me paste here itself and then we can modify or better I create a new file just to show you what exactly this thing. Okay, and let's paste here this thing side by side. See what is there. First of all, we want to import open here and then we have to specify our key, right? This thing we have already specified. So let's get this read of this thing. You could see we have import open here and API key. And this is nothing but the call to GPT-3 API. So we have an open AI and we are calling the completion create endpoint and then we are passing our prompt. So the prompt is nothing but whatever we did here. This particular thing is called a prompt, a input to the GPT-3 on which he it going to generate the text. That is nothing but the prompt so this is the prompt and these are the things are the parameters to gpt3 you could see on the right side there are certain parameters you know goes to gpt3 and all these things i have explained in the earlier video of this playlist so i'm going to put a link in the description of this particular playlist where i have already explained what is gpt3 what is this playground and how to write a prompt and all this thing right this is just i'm covering things which is necessary for this video so these are the parameters and you see we have an instruction here and then the review but this review is not as this review is a static we don't want to put it static rather we want this particular review this part to be a dynamic whatever going to be entered in the stream rate so this thing we don't want this thing has to be a dynamic so we're going to need it is a variable called it's a review because that is the variable we're going to store and then we're going to make it f string now it is not able to find where is the review. So this is how we want to pass your prompt should have a placeholder for your review that you want to test this particular thing. And that is what I did in this example here. So if you see what we have, we have our statement, our instruction. Then in the review, this is the review that we're going to get as a function input and which is nothing but coming from the user, whatever it enters. And then finally you have a reply colon which is nothing but this part you know this part and from that point it is going to generate and whenever gpt3 generate that thing let me go back to the code right this is the prompt we want to pass these are all parameters that we're going to pass and finally we will get the response with the generated text and usually the response syntax is you get the response object it has a number of choices but in our case we get only one choice so choices is an array and the text field associated with it is actually the output okay you might find it confusing so why why don't i simply you know print or lock this also so that you know what actually came inside that you know so let me write this thing let's see i could write here yeah. let's write the whole response also so that it is clear what is coming and there it is, a terminal. Oh, it should be in the view. Okay. So here is our terminal from where we can run it. Let me stop our application which is running. So you know we can run it again. Okay, so it has stopped. So let's run. So to run a streamlit application, yeah. First of all, the one thing I, I think I told you that you need to install this requirements, right? You need to make sure that you install this uh, requirement using pip install streamlit or pip install open air right this thing needs to be installed if you haven't installed since i have already installed it's not going to install it again let me clear this screen and to run a streamlit application you need to do streamlit run and the name of the file which is app.py so let me run this file once it starts running, it will you know 
show the URL that you can try and it will automatically also open in the browser. This our old thing also got restarted. So let's use only this screen. So it's loading now. So let's put something here. Again, go back here and try this particular example. Put that thing here and generate the reply. Okay, you see we have log response also and this is the the actual reply that generated but if you look at what is the response hierarchy so first of all the object that we got is the response object in that it has a array called choices you can call it list this whole thing is a dictionary because we are in python and the one of the key choices is actually a list of choices but it has only one element you could see okay and that one element is actually a dictionary so that is the reason if i go back to the code that we took our response then choices was the list we took the first object of it or the first dictionary and then check the text property or a key of that dictionary so let's go back to the see right this is the text of that choices zero this is what and that text is nothing but this all these things i have already explained right so this is how very simple you know just giving one two or three examples you can create such a powerful application or ai powered application right which can similar way uh, you know now this we did for the restaurant review now it could be anything it could be an e-commerce product review also you just need to change the instruction that maybe you know uh, the same thing is going to work i don't think even you need to change any instruction but if it is not giving you good results as i suggested give two three examples and those examples are nothing but like this what is your input what is expected output some separator again input what is expected output separator and the next time you will only put input so that gpd3 will generate the output right this is how we build an application now if you are wondering you know how can you deploy such an application uh, i think that also i have covered in the earlier video that how to deploy this streamlit application on the streamlit cloud and i will also put that video link into the description right and i have covered i think whole playlist so if you are looking this thing first time like what is playground what is streamlit then i would suggest you uh, you know watch my full playlist this video is what just about creating this replier and i hope you found this video useful and let me know into the comment if you have any you know suggestions for me the next video that i can cover thank you